Nick Zaharov was among those at the festival and joins us live now to talk a little bit more about what he witnessed there. Nick, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I can only begin to imagine what you've been through over the past several days. Yeah, uh, I'm still processing it. You know, it's every day more friends uh, coming up dead. So yeah, I've already been to three funerals now. Yeah, tough times. It's only the beginning. Can you walk me through what happened there at that festival? Because I know I've read numerous reports that a lot of people there thought that the rockets were were maybe fireworks. Can you walk me through all of that? Yeah, well, I was actually I that thought uh, crossed my mind for a quick for a brief moment. <laughs> so I was in the in the fest in the music festival. Um, watching one of the most beautiful sunrises I've ever seen, enjoying, rejoicing, peace and love and unity through the dance floor. Um, so yeah, so I was looking at the sky, I think around 6.30 a.m. I looked up in the sky and I saw what I thought for a quick second were fireworks. But then I realized stuff, you know, because you can't really hear the bangs because the music is so loud. I turn to my friend and I tell them, listen, I think we're we're getting shot at. I think we're getting bombed. As soon as I said that, the music cuts off and then, you know, chaos erupts. But we get on the ground and, you know, that that's how the, messed up the situation in Israel is that I, I was like, okay, well, there's rockets. I'm used to this, you know, it's nothing out of the ordinary. This will pass and then we'll, we'll get in our car and We'll, we'll, we'll go we'll go um we'll go our way find some shelter so everybody at that point is uh, rushing towards the exit um you know we gather our stuff while getting bombarded um and then you know we're trying to find our car we couldn't find it because there's so many people i told my friend listen guys i think it would be better to just relax here for a bit um there's probably going to be a traffic jam being close to a car at that moment isn't the most ideal um, situation. So we just literally were chilling under heavy rocket fire for about 30 minutes. That's when I heard a different kind of noise and I heard um, I heard the, the sounds of gunfire. I turned to my friend, I told him, okay, listen, I think it's time for us to leave. And we got into the car, started driving towards the exit that's when we saw a huge traffic jam. Both roads were blocked off. Police were trying to uh, uh, escort the traffic through dirt roads, telling us to go to head east. Um, we tried to, we, we got on the dirt road for like about a hundred meters. Um, you know, everything is very slow. People are in panic and there's a lot of cars trying to escape at once. So, and roads are blocked, so you can't really drive. That's when you hear the shots ricocheting off their cars, and I told my friend right away, "Let's let's get let's get out of here." Uh, we get out the car, and my friend even left the keys in the car from the panic, and we just started running, uh, like running on that road for about 20 to 30 minutes. We were running uh, while getting shot at from all directions. You know, total mayhem, hundreds, thousands of people running from from every direction. Um, we got away for about, yeah, and then we got up to it, up on a hill. I tried to look back to see, I couldn't see really anything. Couldn't see the terrorists, you know. Also, I think it was, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, stress, so you couldn't really understand what's happening. Um, you know, I looked at my friends, we were all shocked and panicked, and I just gathered them, and I said, listen guys, it's not, we don't have time to fear the situation we're in. Um, I didn't understand the magnitude of it, but I understood that we're, we're in war. And I just said, this is the time for us uh, to stay calm. There's no time to fear and no time for panic. Um, our objective is to, to keep moving and to survive this. And so I opened up the map and I just we started heading east away from the border. I think it was around three three hours that we were, were just walking through fields through different trains 
orchards, fields, uh, farms. We got to a barn and uh, that's where we found some shelter and some water. Um, that's when I looked up in the, um, looked up online to understand. And then I realized that this is no joke and this actually happening. I realized we were between three towns that are actually conquered at the moment by Hamas. Trying to call police, trying to call any any sort of authority, no answer at all. Total desperation. You know, the worst is going through your head, but trying to keep calm while people are just losing it from left to right. Um, yeah, we were there for a couple hours. People, you know, we finally got a hold of somebody just, just told us to stay put and not leave the place, find shelter, find find the hiding spot. Uh, we waited there for for a couple hours as well, uh, you know, talking to people, talking to family, trying to understand what's happening in total chaos. Nobody understands, nobody can even, you know, comprehend the situation we're in because it's, uh, it, it, it hasn't happened for 50 years, you know, it's nothing, you know, it's like the worst thing you can imagine. And yeah, after that, uh, there were ordinary citizens that from the, from the towns nearby that understood the situation and, and didn't wait for nobody and just got in their cars and their trucks and started driving towards the scene and rescued hundreds of people, including myself and my two friends. Um, we got to, uh, to a different town right, right by, close by. That's when we found shelter. And some, they gave us some food, some water, like literally like war refugees. Uh, it's the first time I saw any sign of our military. And it was like two kids, you know, 18 year olds, 19 year olds are just as f more afraid than me just to have weapons. Yeah, that's after that, uh, about an hour, we got a, a bus that took us to uh, a bigger city that's that's safe and from there we uh, they picked us up our family picked us up and we got home listen my story is nothing compared to what i've heard and what i saw the images and what i've seen in the past few days you know people live through literal n nightmare and there are some are still living that nightmare kidnapped in gaza friends that i know people that i've danced with are in Gaza right now, either getting, I don't know, I don't even want to imagine what's happening with them, if they're still alive. And as you're telling me the story here, are you really able to process it? We talked, you know, off the top, you kind of said it, it's been difficult to because it's been less than a week and what you experienced was there's really no word for it. I want to say traumatizing, but that's a severe understatement. So have you had a chance to to really process any of this? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I really, you know, I don't want to sound like some sort of brag or anything, but I, I'm really happy with the way I handle the situation, the way I was, the way I acted there, the way you know, I've seen people there that are just losing it, you know, from panic attacks. I, I you know, I'm encouraged by the way I acted. Um, and it's difficult. My heart goes out to all my friends. You know, I've been to three funerals already. Um, it's just like a broken heart. You know, in the morning, it's difficult. At night, it's even worse. And... In the, in, in the middle of the day, I'm just trying to keep myself busy. Um, actually, at the moment, I'm in my truck. I have a moving business, and we just got to a point where we're um, getting supplies for our troops up north. And I have another five, uh, this, this is the one of five destinations that I'm headed for. And yeah, you know, I, anything to do is to help this situation for me is, is my therapy. You know, to lift people up, to lift my friends up, to to stand united, you know. What message do you want to get across to the Israeli soldiers who are out there fighting right now? The folks, you know, some of which were, were able to rescue people out there. They are on the front lines. What message do you have for them? And, and what message do you want to get across? 
Yeah, some of them are my friends, my actual hometown, you know, friends that are right now on the front lines. Israel is with you, the world is with you. We stand strong and united, and we must defeat and erase this evil from this planet. It cannot exist anymore. Nick, before I let you go, is there anything else that you want to add at all? Yeah, I want to add to, to the American and to the, to the Canadian people watching. These are difficult times, but we as a global human society must stand strong together, defeat this kind of evil, and we cannot stay silent and let this sort of evil exist in our world. It's just unbelievable and unprecedented. This has to stop and must be terminated. Nick Saharov, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. Again, I mean, I know you said that you feel overall fairly fortunate, your story not necessarily uh, comparable to what other people are experiencing, but that is obviously a horrible situation there to have to go through, and most of us cannot even begin to imagine it. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. All right, everybody, take a live look here from one of our cameras showing Gaza right now. You can see overhead we are now in day six of this war as Israel is at war against Hamas. We know Hamas did uh, do that surprise, unprecedented attack. And what you're looking at right now is that live view over Gaza. 2,600 is the current death toll. Uh, we do know that that death toll is expected to rise.